Very good morning. Today is 30th June 2020. There are four articles of the Hindu editorial. The first article is on Palestine, which faces an existential threat. It needs to ask itself whether it supports Israel annexation plan in contravention of international legitimacy for India. Second article is on India-China standoff cautions but a firm. The third article is on the legitimate concern on the law and order in Nagaland. The fourth article is on the public data, sharing the data with public on COVID-19. Before I begin, I am Prashant. I welcome you all to YFS Study Karo. If you are first to my channel, I request you all to subscribe so that you cannot miss any further updates. The cartoon of the day, which shows that standoff between India and China continues at line of actual control even though there are a lot of disengagement and diplomacy talks. The first article is on the Palestine which faces an existential threat. On June 24, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres told a virtual meeting on United Nations Security Council that Israel-Palestine conflict is what washed movement and that the Israel plans to annex parts of West Bank have alarmed the Palestinians. Many Israelites and international communities such as annexation would be a most serious violation of the international law. We also called upon the Israel government to abandon its annexation plans and ask the Middle East Quarter, the United States, Russia and European nation and the UN to resume its mandated mediatory role. A violation, the UN Secretary General alarm had been sounded in the context of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reported plan to annex on July 1st around 30% of occupied West Bank. This will include annexation of all the existing that is post-1967 settlements in addition to the area surrounding them and access the roads. This form of published accounts had approval of the Trump's administration. Under international law, annexation is forcible acquisition of territory by one state and the expense of another state. According to Professor Nathaniel A. Berman of Brown University, US, such an act, even if sanctified by Israel law, is illegal under the international law and would violate the university acknowledged principle of the inadmissibility of acquisition of territory by the force. This, according to him, is accepted position of international legal bodies including the International Court of Justice. The same position has been taken by the Office of High Commissioner and Human Rights, UN Human Rights in a statement on June 16. It described the annexation of the occupied territory as a serious violation of the Charter of United Nations and the Geneva Conventions. And the contrary to the fundamental rule affirmed many uh, times by the UN Security Council and General Assembly that acquisition of a territory war or by the forces is inadmissible. He also pointed out that 53-year-old Israel occupation is a source of profound human rights violation of Palestine, uh, Palestine uh, people and said these human rights violations would only intensify after annexation. What would be left on the West Bank would be Palestine, Palestinian islands is disconnected land completely surrounded by Israel and with no territorial connections with the outside world. Israel has also recently promised that it will maintain permanent security control between the Mediterranean and the Jordan River. Thus, the morning after the annexation would be the crystallization of an already unjust reality where the two people living in the same space ruled by the same state uh, but with the profoundly unequal rights. This is the vision of 21st century apartheid. The statement concludes that despite the dismal record of the Israel's past violation of international law, accountability and an end of impunity became immediate priority for the international community. The Israel Pulse Despite Mr. Netanyahu's bravado, an opinion poll conducted by Israel newspaper Arjet on March last year showed that only 28% of Israel's opposed annexation and 11% supported full annexation with the political rights of Palestine and 16% of full annexation with no political right of Palestinians. In addition, 15% of partial annexation and 30% expressed no views. 
An interesting and unprecedented entrant in the debate is the opinion article titled It's Either Annexation or Normalization, written by Hebrew by United Arab Emirates Ambassador in Washington, published in the Israel's newspaper Yedido Ahron. The, it urged the Israel government to desist from the contemplated move. The effect of this plan, what would be the consequences of such a move? Would Palestinians living in annexed area and owing around 23% of its land retain their private property is another question. Would they be enshrined in the legal framework of two class population divided by ethnicity and given Israel residency as a category of subjects of annexing equity or entity? How would they be a par with the Israel's Arab and Palestinian origin that is Muslim, Christian and Druze together constitute about 20% of Israel's population? Above all, it will take away from the Palestinians the right to have their own state under the right of national self-discrimination or determination reorganized or recognized times without number of international community. Would there be a demographic consequences? Israel, by its foundational proclamation, it is not Jewish a state only because most of its inhabitants are Jews. It is a state of Jews whether there may be or for any Jew who wish to be here. It's officially ideology of Zionism, somewhat analogous to the other doctrines of the student nationalism of 20th century, was described much earlier by Vladimir as a colonization adventure and therefore it stands or falls by the question of armed forces. Ever since the war of June 1967, the Israel's effort to have been procrastinate a settlement and change ground realities, Israel today is a member of international community and contributes to international cooperation. It also succeeded in normalizing its relations with a wide range of countries. The observance of the globally accepted norms of the state conduct a reluctant to do this is premised on the support of powerful friends and cooperative geopolitics must uh, this be a necessary to have a permanence. The record of Palestinian residence or resistance and of the protest movements of the world show that the injustice of denial of rights have been no permanence. And as uh, Jean Jacques Rousseau said a long time, the strongest is never strong any strong enough to be always master unless he is a transform into power. India has substantive relation reaching strategic dimensions with Israel. It is mutually beneficial. India's enmity with Palestinian people and its principal support to their cause uh, predates its own India's own independence. On the global stage, we have invariably supported by Union Security Council and General Assembly resolution support of the Palestinian. Regarding the Palestinian faces and ex Potential threat and how India need to ask itself whether it supports Israel annexation plan or not. This article is penned down by Pal uh, Hamid Ansari, a farmer. Next article is on India China standoff. After the weeks uh, of more diplomatic wording, the statement by Ministry of External Affairs on June 26th appears to signal that the patient. Patience is dealing with the Beij in Beijing on reaching at the dead end. The statement said publicly for the first time since the reports of standoff that Chinese a build up and clashes with Indian troops, including Galwan Valley incidents on June 15th, in which 20 Indian soldiers were brutally killed and had a larger context. Moving away from the precious statements that alluded to the clashes in is a quite routine and born. Or from differences in the perceptions of line of actual control, the Ministry of External Affairs and the PLA behavior this year was a shift from the past. It also admitted that the Chinese side had built a large amid armed presence since early May, making it clear that India's strategic establishment had uh, has much to worry about. There are also another shift of notes while the, each of the Ministry of External Affairs several references to the situation at line of actual control in May and June had mentioned a dialogue as a way forward. Its latest statements make it clear that the China's responsibility to restore peace and tranquility along the line of actual control without citing further dialogue. It also warned that a continuation of the current situation would only violate the atmosphere for the relationship. 
indicating that the current status quo is unacceptable. In detailing the number of clashes, the use of unauthorized violence on June 15th and the sheer number of the troops as a weaponry amassed, the government is pointing out that China has violated every agreement on the border peace that the two sides have committed since 1983 agreement. In short, the message in this is not only the situation at line of actual control, but China's actions have also probably undone decades of careful negotiation on the boundary. Given all that, the Ministry of External Affairs statement not acknowledges it is also only inevitable that government will face probing questions and on silence when such a large troop mobilization by China threatened India's frontiers weeks ago and whether it signals out of Beijing that this build-up was intended. Other questions remain, so Modi insistence and the Ministry of External Affairs consistent stand-up that Chinese troops have done have not come across the line of actual control and that there has been only attempted transgressions by the PLA. Satellite pictures and media accounts points to the contrary, the government must now ensure some clarity. The nation must be apprised on the challenges and steps planned beyond ongoing military diplomacy exchanges to ensure that the status quo anti the prior to May is restored by China. Each step, whether it involves military action, international support or sanctions by banning Chinese product or participation of Chinese telecom and other companies will come a serious consequence. The government must ensure wide consultation simultaneously preparing the people for what it may follow. Regarding caution but firm on India-China standoff. The next article is on the law and order in Nagaland. By writing a strong letter to Nagaland Chief Minister Naipur Rao, alleging that law and order had collapsed in the state and the armed gangs who question uh, the sovereignty and integrity of the nation had challenged it, uh, its authority uh, by engaging in blatant and extortion and stiffening of the funds uh, meant for development of work. Governor R. N. Ravi had thrown down the government to the ruling of National Democratic Progressive Party-led government in which BJP is a coalition partner. The governor went on, a, on to write that the functions as transfer and posting of officials who are in charge of law and order above the district level will be done with his approval and proposed under the Article 371A the constitu Constitution. In a way, he was only voicing the concerns of the societies of civil society over the side in the law. It is illegal collections by armed groups have also been for several years. In its response to the letter, the Insurgent Nationalistic, uh, so National Socialistic Council of um, Nagalim Isak, that is NSCMIM, which has been observing a ceasefire with the government for the last 23 years, had said the group only engaged in the collection of taxes, suggesting that the governor was inaccurate in his description. The much touted peace accord with the insurgent groups involved in the long-standing Naga conflict is yet to be achieved despite the center's push to conclude in its in last year. Mr. Ravi had remained in the center's interlocutor, uh, a position he took up in 2015 even after becoming the state government in 2019 August. Despite uh, the center's heady statements uh, hurling a Naga peace according to sin according since 2015, it is also now a close finalizing it with the groups in some way this is due to the NSCN I am obstancy such as the intense or insistence on retaining a separate flag and constitution for the state of Nagaland and its unwillingness to dismantle its parallel administration and parliamentary structure this distrust invokes among other Naga organizations besides other northeastern government because of its core ideology and greater Nagalism. Yet without an agreement and the reign of insurgent groups, the state government have a little a leeway in imposing its will and prevent the blatant extortion that is hampering development and law and order. Regarding the law and order which is facing a legitimate concern, the Nagaland. The next article is regarding the COVID-19 data, the unsatisfactory state of India's data collection and processing system among 
uh, many systematic deficiencies exposed by the pandemic. It is also highlighted by the recent upward revisions of the COVID-19 debt toll in some states. Apart from this implicit acknowledgement of the discrepancies in the data handling process, there is also allegations under the report of COVID-19 cases in general uh, on every issue encountered during the last three months from migra migrants, travels, the inadequate fiscal package, a lack of reliable data in the public domain has hampered search policy alternatives. From 2006 onwards, several open source software enthusiasts and civil society activists come together in US-UK with a demand to unlock the data gathered by the government for uh, unfettered access and refuge by the citizens. Making the data accessible in India, a step towards making a non-sensitive government data accessible online was taken in 2012 with the adoption of National Data Sharing Policy that is NDSAP Accessibility Policy. However, the implementation had lagged far behind its stated objectives. The main thrust of this policy is to promote data sharing and enable access to the government of India own data by national planning and development and awareness. The implementation guidelines for NDSAP includes the lofty ideas or ideals such as openness, flexibility, transparency, quality of data and the aim to facilitate the access of the government of India shareable data in machine readable form. The guidelines precise open digital formats suitable for analysis and dissemination. Opaque formats such as portable document formats and image formats are dis discouraged. Apart from the open government data that is OG OGD initiative, data.gov.in was launched in 2012. In, re in current climate, the OGD initiative could potentially have made substantial differences in India's COVID-19 response. And the district-wide demographic-wise case statics, statistics and anonymous contract traces have been released in the public domain, reliable mo model forecasts and disease spread and targeted regional lockdown protocols could have been generated. Model forecasts have limitations but models without inputs have empirical data are even more unreliable. Principles of OGD notwithstanding sufficiently gr uh, granular infection data are not available. Ironically, violating the data format guidelines, OGD portals provide COVID-19 data as a graphic image unsuitable for the analysis. And the other financial official the data sources, that is Indian Council of Medical Research, that is mygov.in, is fair no better. And they too do not publish a district-wide statistics and available data are in a usable form. Such half-hearted attempts throttle any possibility of data-driven research, innovation, and useful outcomes. In contrast, the data portals in Canada, UK, and US present a district-wise COVID-19 cases data and also emergent effects on mental health, job, and education. According to the latest report of the Open Data Barometer, an independent group measuring the impact of open data, these nations lead to a pack while uh, the India is a contender to reach the top bracket and not laggard. The government must provide the impetus and incentive to exploit this uh, voluminous data by invigorating the dated national data port port portal. Creating a social impact, every department must be mandated to share substantive data respecting uh, privacy concerns. Much of the consensus and social economic data, publicly funded research data, and scientific data are either not opening or rotting in unsuitable form. The government should look within the f for the examples of creative outcomes of the openness the database. Startups should have built novel applications using Indian Railways data to provide a ticket confirmation prediction and real-time train status. Sharing public data is a way to create a beneficial social impact. This is regarding uh, the public data sharing uh, with the pub. The lack of reliable data in public domain has hampered the search for the policy of alternative researches in India. That's the end of article discussion. If you are new to my channel, I request you all to subscribe so that you cannot miss any further updates. My Insta, Facebook and YouTube channel name YFS Study Karu. You can also follow me on Instagram. Uh, wife says study karo thanks for joining me have a great day